Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, Nick fans. Welcome back to the Nick After Show here on AfterBuzz TV, talking about Season 1, Episode 6, Start Calling Me Dad. I'm Matt Lieberman. Joining me, as always, Marissa Serafini is Hello, here. Hello, everyone. Oriana Leo is here. Hello, everybody. And we have a very, very special guest with us today, Michael Angarano, who plays Bertie Chickering on the show. Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. We're thrilled to have you. And what a great episode this was. Yes. Uh, also, ultimately, very unsettling. Yes. Uh, some soaring highs and some very weird Lows. And it's kind of interesting, we're a little more than halfway through the first season of the show, but in many respects, if you were to think about it in terms of in terms of chapters or books, this felt like the closing of the first book of the show. We have these six episodes that are chapters within it, but we close two very major storylines in that we finally are able to uh, get a, a successful previa surgery, previa operation. Uh, we finally get to see our, um, our Chickering and Elkins date, mm -hmm. and we finally get to catch Typhoid Mary. Uh, <laughs> and then we get a couple of you know very big twists in some of our major storylines that are gonna spin us off into interesting new directions. Mm -hmm. Can't wait to break it all down. So I wanna start, it's the middle of the night, Right. Uh, it's the middle of the night, and uh, Bertie Chickering Sr., Birch, sorry, Bertram, Right. he does not appreciate being called Bertie. No, definitely not. No, it's far too cute. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he, you, you get this call, you get summoned down, uh, and you find these two uh, beautiful uh, Asian prostitutes. Lovely, lovely. Lovely ladies. Women, yeah. Um, and, Female uh, subjects. Yeah, <laughs> and Thackeray is just in this whole, on this whole other cocaine plane of having been up for two straight days. Uh, so uh, tell us about, about shooting this scene uh, with, with Clive. Like, it's very interesting. You can tell in certain sequences like how much cocaine right. that he's on. Like he makes a very specific choice of how right. jittery to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, in right. this one, he's just kind of off. Yeah. yeah. When, you know, we all first read it, this is kind of the apex Yeah. up until this point yeah. of, of his cocaine, you know, frenzy, yeah. really. And it's the first time, um, I think Birdie especially, but us as an audience, we get to really see kind of what he's like, you know, mm -hmm. after hours yeah. and what he does on his spare time. And, um, you know, it, it was it, it was one of those things watching Clive do it, you know, in rehearsal. We were doing it a bunch of times, and then Stephen was just like, you know, more volume. And Clive was like, yep, yep, a lot of volume. Mm -hmm. it, 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 was, it was really fun watching him because when you kind of envision this, like, mad scientist, mm -hmm. you know, which, or, you know, what, Clive is essentially you. You imagine this kind of the surgeon who's like you know pulling at these different things and has so many different things on his mind and and you really see kind of as a result what a genius he really is. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, I like this particular scene because we know that he he does all this cocaine and he's always constantly studying to try to improve the Nick. But he was really excited and happy at this time and this is where like he loves. It shows how much he truly does love medicine and how much he wants to improve upon this particular operation and all the operations to come. I really love this turn of a character for him and mm -hmm. having a breakthrough moment. Yeah, yeah. You see where y you know his obsession with the previa, um, where where he kind of really differs from somebody like Christensen or or Gallinger or even Algernon, where he's gonna. It's an unhealthy obsession <laughs> yeah and uh, yeah like I said it's kind of his apex like it mm -hmm. it doesn't really you know as uh, up until this point you you really haven't seen him beat something right and be triumphant over something so this is like a this is a huge victory it's a huge victory what I find interesting about this episode is that we don't see him crash at all like mm -mm. he he's on a high the whole episode dr. Thackeray mm -hmm. we don't see him come down we don't see him mess up 
we don't see if he's just on a good one the entire episode. And I'm curious how this is going to play out. Yeah. Because you can't maintain that forever. You can't Even maintain that Even if it's done speed. with... Right, if you're done with doing drugs. I mean, eventually your body's going right. to have to sleep, right. shut down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when, when does that happen? Yeah. But it's such a delight to have an episode where we do win for once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I feel like it, we have had... Have we had a single successful surgery so far uh, it, during the se- the season? I think we had uh, the aortic aneurysm. The pin, the, yeah, the, the other than Algernon, the pin, the, but that didn't was, lose a leg. Right. Okay. So we had a couple. They didn't get shot by. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but it guy. was still it was still a major victory. And what I love about what you're bringing to the scene, and and really just this character in general, is he's got a genuine joy to him. He's so excited to he's so excited to be a part of what Dr. Thackeray's doing. Yeah. Uh, and I, I wonder if that kind of comes from, you know, your own just excitement to be a part of this project. It just feels so very, very natural. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it was definitely, I think, you know, across the board, everybody was extremely excited to be a part of this from yeah. day one. It's kind of just like a an actor's wet dream, mm-hmm. really, <laughs> and, and to work with Steven, too, and, and the writers. Everybody's pretty much bringing their A game. Um, but I, I Birdie is... You know, I think, needless to say, he's the youngest of of the surgical staff, and he's the youngest of the hospital, and um, that's where he and Lucy really bond too, because they're the two, you know, the youngest ones, and they have seen, you know, less and haven't experienced as much. They're not as jaded, mm-hmm. but I think what Bertie brings is genuine curiosity, mm-hmm. and I think he's extremely excited. I think you see, you know, in this episode. Um, a little bit more of, of, of the man his father is and how he was raised. And his father is uh, very conventional, mm-hmm. very traditional, and looks at the Nick like an asylum. Yeah. And for Birdie, this is, even, even though it may be an asylum, this is where, this is progression. Yeah. This is the forefront of technology right now, medical technology anyway. Mm-hmm. I think it says a lot about Birdie's character mm-hmm. that he came from this family and he came from this man, and yet he still has so much enthusiastic enthusiasm and zest for life, for the Nick, the curiosity. He's not afraid, and it kind of seems like the household he came from. That's what I would have expected. Right. I mean, you know, we get to see a little bit more of him as we go on, but I, I think he just holds Thackeray in such reverence. Mm-hmm. I think he's, you know, really venerates this man, and I think he really looks at him with so much respect. And I think he gets a little glimpse into what makes him that man, mm-hmm. and he's slightly naive to it, or not naive, but more blinded by, you know, what's really going on. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it's really more just, you know, he's... He's very aware of of the things Thackeray is doing and the things Al- Algernon is doing, and and I think that's what he you know aspires to be really. Yeah, I think there's two very interesting things that come off of what you just said, and, and the first plays out in uh, the long-awaited date between Chickering and Elkins, mm-hmm. uh, where you're both talking about how amazing Dr. Thackeray is, and we have this added subtext of what she knows about him and her kind of mm-hmm. like developing uh, fascination with him. Right. Um, and that you both, uh, again, you know, are a bit n- more naive about about life and about working in a hospital for a long period of time and having to deal with the crushing failure over and over and over again. Uh, but seeing what this guy is capable of is so intoxicating, in- intoxicating is the word, is the word yes. that you yes. used. And then also by episode's end, after we've, we've invented this new procedure and had it be successful and have your name on it and have him, bas- you know, like pass you a drink and basically hug you, you know, he's kind of supplanted your father. He is the new father. That's kind of like the moment that I got of just sort of like, there is there is a man at home who uh, doesn't believe in what I believe in, who is backwards, who isn't, you know, who I want to become. And then there's this other guy who supports everything that I believe and, you know, isn't afraid to call me Birdie, isn't afraid to show some affection, isn't right. afraid to be more of a human than my father. Right. Uh, I mean, for me, it was really interesting reading it for the first time because it's a lot of you it's it's very similar to the problems that you have as a as a 20 something year old you know you could make a current contemporary like you know indie drama about Bernie's life if he was a new you know what i mean exactly he's yeah. he's having the same issues that we all have when we're in our 20s which we're 
having, you know, we're seeing our parents as people, mm -hmm. as, as, as not these heroes that we grew up with. And Thackeray is kind of taking the mantle of, you know, Bertie's new hero in a way. But also he's accepted as an individual, not accepted mm -hmm. as this, you know, esteemed physician's son anymore. He's now a physician of his own. and He's developing an identity. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I don't even yeah, know if I want to... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, oh yeah, just to, to add to the identity, because we do hear in episodes back where... Where Bertram Senior was saying them calling you Bertie, it, that's disrespect. And then when we hear Thackeray tonight say Bertie the Wise, mm -hmm. you know, it's not disrespect; it's more of a respect. And it's kind of the ultimate respect. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's you know? building your character because yeah. you, Bertie sees it in a completely different way than Bertram Senior does. Yeah. And it's interesting because I think Bertie's also open enough with his father anyway that he doesn't think his father is wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, I think he also respects and completely sympathizes with his father in a way where he's you know he is a very well respected physician and his father has given him this opportunity and probably is you know responsible for him being a physician and so he he doesn't want to completely disavow himself from his father either so mm -hmm. it's he's kind of torn you know he can't just say you know this is what I'm doing you have to get it either way he, he listens to him and he allows him in and he and he tries to absorb that as as you know at the same time as as he's going forward you know yeah uh, so let's talk about this procedure uh specifically because it was when i first saw this episode um i was just kind of blown away at you know the simplicity but then also just like oh isn't that brilliant of taking this basketball and and essentially shoving it inside of someone mm -hmm. um and uh it was I was just kind of like so blown away by the ingenuity of it, how long it must have taken him to, to come up with this thing, and then of course having to stay up all night trying it over and over and over right. again. Um, the thing I find really funny about the procedure, because what we're looking at on the blackboard when, when, when yeah. Thackeray's explaining it, I mean, it, 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 was all, it was all like this, all of the surgeries and all of the, all of the pamphlets we looked at, but the surgery was described, you know, detail for detail on that blackboard. And so we're, as we were filming, as he's explaining, I'm, I'm really looking at it. And what's really amazing about it is it seems like an idea somebody came up with while they were really stoned. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, like what if we shoved a basketball right. inside her and, like, stuffed the bleeding? The practicality right. of it. Yeah. 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 But, I mean, very functional. Yeah. Uh -huh. Functional stone man. You know what I mean? Um... <laughs> The no, the, the 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 surgery itself is is really fascinating because essentially they're in, you know putting this balloon in there and then filling it with water and it and it serves it puts enough pressure on the wound that it doesn't bleed out mm -hmm. and they have time to go in there it doesn't shouldn't take seventy seconds it could take as you know shorter as long a time as you want not as as long a time as you want sure. but you know. The pressure isn't there. The time isn't there. It was really the thinking outside of the box that Thackeray's talking about that kind of gave them the in, the literal, you know, the yeah. insertion. I think it's also just remarkable thinking about the medical advances and how these sort of balloons and bladders are used every day now. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And to think that this type of activity was what would be required to invent such a thing. Because who else is going to let you near them? Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's a really plausible storyline. I really right. enjoyed it because I feel like, why not? Why not? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't this be the way you would figure it out? Yeah, and I liked how this was the third time's the charm. Really mm -hmm. right. Because we see this for the third time, and we're so hoping, because last time we saw it, we didn't even see the procedure, we just know it failed. Right. So I like how they had that build up to something that was successful. And also just their mentality of everything, when they're thinking outside the box and they're having that conversation and Bertie says, how does the patient die slower? And still that mentality that people are still going to die on the operating table instead of how do they live longer, it's die slower. So, I mean, it's just amazing how everything is still, you know, they're still working to keep everything going. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's really fascinating. And, you know, as just show as an actor who just read the 10 the 10 scripts you you mm -hmm. kind of we got to understand a lot of these types of surgeries placenta obviously being the one of the more you know important ones throughout the season but these surgeries were really you know fascinating in 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 
in, in just first of all how many people they had to go through to get it right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And 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 that's the step that Christensen takes that mm-hmm. you know that Thackeray you know is kind of lucky enough to not have to go through because you Christensen you know over the first and episode over, and over again. Yeah. Dozens upon dozens the same way mm-hmm. and you know imagine how frustrating that would be and then simple as simple as something as simple as you know thinking you know it's not how <laughs> how fast you how do fast it. it is yeah um i love this moment where uh you kind of you kick the door open you're walking down the hallway and it's like oh man we're in for something epic here mm-hmm. uh and you're you're just jazzed and then to see it go well and to hear them applaud you just want to applaud yourself mm-hmm. yeah. yeah now i want to talk more about the relationship between uh birdie and nurse elkins uh, because I'm concerned, as, right. as we all should be, because right. she's got her attention elsewhere. She still agreed to come out with you, but uh, I, I'm one of my favorite bits <laughs> of, of acting in this episode. It's such a throwaway moment, but it's it's when you're like, I don't, I don't even know why I have a pretzel. I don't even like pretzels. Yeah, um, that, you guys share that a was, laugh. That was actually uh, Stephen's idea. Yeah, it was one of these things. <coughs> excuse me, where. Um, Stephen would do a lot of that where he would, you know, he very rarely, you'd be surprised how much he really kind of directs you. Yeah. Um, almost sometimes to a, a, a you know, a nerve rattling extent as an actor, you're like, I guess I'm just terrible. But sometimes he'll come up to you with very specific direction, like, you know, we shouldn't say this, we shouldn't say this. And this scene specifically was, um, was one of these scenes where we showed up and he was kind of like, figure it out and we were like what do you mean like he was like well I think it should be this which is like cutting out a lot of the main flirtation that we have in the scene and we were Mm -hmm. like well what is the scene really I mean it it was this exploration that happens and we figured it out after a couple rehearsals but after one take I was just I just looked at him and I was like and we have a pretzel Mm -hmm. and that's it and he was like why (laughs) I don't even like pretzels Mm -hmm. and it was just such a funny thing that I was like I'm going to I'm going to do that and he was like, "Yeah, great." It was, yeah. you know, a really fun little thing. Yeah. Well, I think it's nice because you know, you don't really see it as as much throughout the show especially, but it's the first time you really see Lucy smile mm-hmm. and laugh and and you know, I I always said from the start that, you know, you're going to kind of want Lucy and and Thackeray to gravitate toward each other because as the show goes on, that's where you know, you're getting all of these looks and these strange, very intimate moments. There's heat there. Yeah, mm-hmm. there, exactly. There's mutual this... fascination, we said last week. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I always said, I was like, you know, Birdie, as, as sweet and, 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 you know, and kind of naive as he seems, he has to be presented to her as a good option. Mm-hmm. And I think this, this scene is really nice because you also see that with them and maybe on a different kind of level. But you see them genuinely interested in each other and having a nice time with each other, and and I think that's really important for both of them. Absolutely, this yeah. this could be a nice life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this could be a very good life. Yeah, the two of and them. and might as well be, mm-hmm. you know, and it, it might make sense. Um, I think uh, you know Birdie's a little. Um, <laughs> I don't think he's, uh, you know suspecting as much as actually is right. what might be potentially going on. Um, but I think, you know, they look at each other with kind of real fondness. And like I said, they're the two youngest people in the hospital, really. Mm-hmm. So they're going to connect over that. But I, I think there's something more there as well. I think he really kind of looks at her like somebody who he really is starting to care for in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it would be great for those two to be together, too, because also because you said they are the youngest, they are the most fresh, they could really grow together. And they could really work in that professional relationship as well. And, and also with the platonic friendship side. So, right. I mean, it could be You really immediately good. go to the platonic <laughs> friendship. Yeah. Oh. I, As a girl, I, you yeah. immediately... Yeah. I friend-zoned Birdie last friend week. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, what, I, what I like about the two of them together is that there's still room for her in his life. Mm-hmm. Like, whatever fascination Thackeray has with Nurse Elkins medicine is the only love that he has time mm-hmm. for. It's medicine and drugs. But Lucy, we learned last week, she likes to be scared. She likes the titillation. Mm. She mm-hmm. likes the things that Dr. Zachary has to offer. 
I know. But and she might be a little bored with Birdie, even if right. he's the best option. It's going to say a lot about her mm-hmm. character yes. in yeah. general, the direction in which she goes, because I think you have two very different men mm-hmm. and two very good options. One, you know, both equally as realistic at this point, mm-hmm. it seems like. But, you know, you can, you're going to really get a sense of who she is and, and who everybody is in this little in this little yeah. menage a trois. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it might be that. Maybe, I mean, you know, hey, anything. this is a Cinemax. Yeah. Anything goes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, we have to move on. Real quick, I just want to mention iTunes. Folks, I say it every week. Why do I say it? Because it's the truth. Go to iTunes, rate and review the shows that you listen to or that you watch on YouTube. It's the best way that you can support us here at AfterBuzz TV. We're putting out over 80 hours of original podcast content wow. every single week for the low, low price of free. It's a massive undertaking. It needs all the help that we can get. And your ratings and reviews are how we attract our sponsors who keep our doors open, keep our lights on. It's how we get great guests like Michael here. And we've had great guests every single week on this yes, show. Yes, we have. An yes. unprecedented run. <laughs> great. Uh, so please go to iTunes. Support the network. We deeply appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So uh, I want to talk about uh, Mr. Barrow, who last week got the $3,000 necessary to buy a brand new x-ray machine. But of course, that's not what he's going to do. He is going to uh, skimp and cut corners anywhere that he can so he can pocket more cash. Uh, you know, stealing from Peter to pay Paul. Mm-hmm, and we yep. get uh, the wonderful character of Mr. Luff, played by Tom Papa, um, who was just like a wonderful so well addition. Cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he's so like beautifully old school theatrical. Mm-hmm. Um, like he's he's so salesman y. Uh, but at the same time, he's like, he's he's not a slimy. He is slimy, but he isn't. He's so non threatening yep. that the slime like looks like, oh, maybe that's chocolate. But it's not chocolate. <laughs> right. Slime. Yeah. Those scenes are so fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love when the when he goes. This will take an hour. An hour. <laughs> yeah. And he's just standing there with the frame to his face, yeah. completely oblivious. Yeah. And nobody had any thought to you know what radiation could do to them. He was talking about how his kids were taking X-rays, leaving it on all day long. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have to imagine, you know, we have this kind of like little nugget of the uranium running out that doesn't get answered in the scene. He's like, mm-hmm. we don't know how long the uranium l- will last, and Luff doesn't say a word. Mm-hmm. And I have to imagine that this is going to be one of those times where Barrow gets caught with his pants down at I some totally point down the road. I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, with, a, with a piece of equipment that expensive and that delicate, there's no way that you can cut corners and be ignored. Especially yeah. given the direct mandate, go buy a new x-ray machine. I mean, mm-hmm. like, that just means there's really no room for error, and I think it's kind of setting us up for a softball. Right. It, it, the, and, but, oh, yeah, go ahead. and also just the abuse of the, the machine, because everyone's so excited. It's such a newfangled technology that can mm-hmm. really advanced medicine but the fact that everyone just wants to try it you know it's like a new toy that everyone has to play with just the abuse of it mm-hmm. yeah yeah, there's a limited amount of uranium in there, mm-hmm. and there's a chance that something can break. And the fact is, there's no contractor to blame it on this time. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, what, what's going to happen? He's going to say he bought it from Luff. Thackeray knows that Luff's a snake. I was just going to mm-hmm. say mm-hmm. that the juxtaposition of those two situations, where Thackeray is like, you know, get the hell out of my office when hell freezes over, and then you see Barrow trying to make a deal with the guy, like, Maybe there's something he should he should know about this man mm. that he's really not going to be giving. Him oh, a fair I think he's deal. fully aware. You yeah. think? Oh, one hundred percent. He's just willing to take the risk. He's so he's take he will take any risk at this point. He doesn't and care. He's a, he's a desperate money. man. Yeah. He's just a desperate. But he'll be more desperate when he gets fired. Oh, I don't mm. think that's coming for a while yet. <laughs> I, I think Barrow? he's yeah. I like watching him twist too much for him to get fired so soon. I I, I feel like that would be just like. A, a comedy gap that would need to be filled because there's just so much joy in watching him wheedle and then ultimately twist when he's in a bind. Um, he was my he was my favorite character yeah. when I read the ten episodes. Uh, Jeremy Bob's character. He reminds me. I, I, I forget the actor's name, but he reminds me of the Riddler from uh, Batman. Yeah, you know, a Frank Horshin. Yeah, I think he would make an amazing Riddler at some I think point. you're absolutely he right. Um, yeah. Can we make that suggestion to someone? someone yeah, uh, well, they already cast the character yeah. on Gotham, but maybe oh. they'll do a flash forward. Yeah. yeah. But maybe. he's just, you know, this greedy kind of... this. Re- he's a businessman of the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just just collecting and, and, and wheeling and dealing and just... Slippery, mm-hmm. a slippery man. Yeah. yeah, you do what you got to do. Anything yeah. to get money. 
Yeah. They had exactly. to survive in New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you got that right. He's got he's <laughs> got this lover. He's got Junia. How's he ever gonna take her where she where she deserves to be without cash? Yeah, I don't know that he's really spending it on her. He's just stealing from his wife, giving to her, and who knows where the rest of the money's going. Well, yeah. I mean, it's also going back to his wife. I mean, we saw that scene episodes ago where she was like, she wanted that walking around money, and right. he's just passing out, and she's like, I might also hit this place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I know you feel for him so much mm -hmm. sometimes where you're just like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, please, no. Mm -hmm. And then he just keeps going. He's he's relentless. Yeah. yeah. I also love the scene between Luff and Dr. Thackeray uh, because, of course, Dr. Thackeray's a respected name in medicine. Of course, some snake oil salesman would be coming to him looking to throw his name on something. And I feel like it's such a wonderful echo to what even goes on now where, uh, you know, brands are trying to get celebrities to back their products and, and make them seem... And I was just saying seem... while we watched it, you know, this is here we have the advent of the pharmaceutical sales business mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. where we have the the manufacturer coming to the the doctor and says we can make a deal let's do it together there's lots of money to be made not that it would help anyone no but yeah. not we, that it's real right. <laughs> not that it doesn't work <laughs> what right. are the not that it actually works yeah yeah that brain tonic is being sold at fountains as a beverage as much as a medicine but also yeah. when you think about the number he throws out of five million dollars in sales back then that's unbelievable it's unheard of and i don't know if this guy does seem like a big fat liar mm -hmm. luff so i can't be sure that that's a realistic number but to even throw that out well, you can see why these these cr you know credible doctors mm -hmm. are letting their name and face be on a snake oil bottle because yeah. That's a lot of money. It's but a lot of x-ray machines. It's yeah. a lot of x-ray machines. But how many vacuums. of them are actually credible? Yeah. Not, now knowing the fact that people just put their names out there just for a quick In time, buck. they won't mm -hmm. be exactly. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's interesting. I mean, you think back to even something as simple as Coca-Cola, which was originally sold as a tonic, mm -hmm. you know, with extract from the coca leaf, mm -hmm. getting the similar effect to what Dr. Thackeray's fueled on every single day. He should mm -hmm. be backing that yes, product. Yes, that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. I support it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so, Dr. Gallinger, Ugh. dealt a serious blow this week. Uh. We were talking. Uh, we were talking last week uh, about how this guy he had had, you know, all of all of the opportunities in the world. He had been handed everything uh, and was still expecting more, and hadn't really ever faced any serious difficulties. And this is uh, it's it's the unthinkable. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know his wife is putting pressure on him. I felt so horrible for him in that moment where she's like, Everett will think of something. And he knows that his child is doomed. Mm -hmm. And she's like, no, you, there's gotta be something. You can do something. And, you know, Sister Harriet knows when he, when he mentions uh, this procedure, this bleeding, uh, that it won't do anything. Mm -hmm. That it's all already gone and then they still have to go through the motions. Even, mm -hmm. even for back then, the vivisection, I think that's what it's called, yeah. Yeah. was completely desperate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not. It's it's a complete act of desperation. Mm -hmm. There's there's nothing. There's basically no chance. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's it's, it's just tough a, to watch. Yeah. And also, just you know, we've talked in previous episodes about um, Dr. Gallinger and how, as much as he's been handed everything, he expects more. He's never actually done anything other than read charts. <laughs> but the fact that you know he doesn't have any accreditations to his name. Birdie and yeah. Dr. Edwards are both having successes, and the only thing he succeeded in doing was bring, bringing bacteria home to his own child. Yeah. So, well, I mean, it, I don't know how he's going to recover from this. Can it, I ask you, and maybe this is an unfair question, mm. but did you ever talk on set, is Birdie Chickering a better a better surgeon than Gallinger? Um, you know what? I, uh, I think, to be honest, I think one day he will be. Okay. I, I think Birdie is kind of has a lot of potential. Yeah. yeah. I think he has a lot of potential. He's really young. I mean, you know, he's sign at least 10 years younger so than Gallinger still, is. Right. He's still green. Yeah, but, but it's his attitude. Yeah. Yes, it's also the attitude and also what makes Bertie and Gallinger so different is that Bertie's willing to learn and try mm -hmm. different new mm -hmm. things. Right. And Gallinger's so set in his ways that he doesn't. He likes... It's like, this is the way I've been doing it. We're not going to let anyone else say otherwise. So he's very set in his ways, and that's what differentiates those two. You know what, though? I actually think Gallinger is a physician of his own right. We just really haven't been able to see it because his baby has meningitis. Right. But I, I think you... I, I think if Thackeray thinks as highly as of him as he does, I think he must be. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, you know... 
<laughs> the the kind of attitude that he's taken on since Algernon has come in has has really affected his work. I mm -hmm. think you could say, oh. yeah. and kind of has blinded him in a way that um, it definitely hasn't Bertie or or Algernon. You know, they they both keep striving mm -hmm. as does Thackeray, but Gallinger seems to mm -hmm. have been really professionally affected mm -hmm. by yeah. everything that's going on. Yeah. So uh, unfortunately, they they lose their baby, uh, and there's that awful mm -hmm. scene where they take a photo and you see just how stricken he is the, and and uh Eleanor his wife is just she's completely somewhere else she she won't even touch the the dead child she, can she can denial. Denial. Well, yeah. she's yeah, looking, when he just tries to yeah. give yes. it to her it's it's so heartbreaking Ugh. but she's like looking at it almost as if it doesn't exist right. almost as if there's nothing in his mm -hmm. hands she's so shell shocked and then of course in this next scene in 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 the wake uh she refuses to believe that she's died. She's 100% uh, in denial about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, Sister Harriet has this suggestion, desperate though it may be, uh, but it would, you know, her mission is to is to help the help babies have better lives and to make sure that there aren't babies being born into homes that can't support them. Mm -hmm. So she's like, there is this orphan, this orphan girl. You know, sometimes it helps a woman just to have a, a baby in her hands. Maybe it'll help her. Uh, I'm very concerned that in this kind of like offer rocker state of mind, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she's just going to pick up where she left off, and that this is this is the baby that never died. Right. I'm terrified. I am too. I'm really concerned that's going to happen. And as much as it's well-meaning, the woman is in a very desperate state. She's and grieving. To, yeah. She's grieving. She's grieving. But to give she's her grieving. another, like, I'd be afraid for the child's safety even. Mm -hmm. Because if she's going through, like, a very serious, you know, grieving period that could be a depression or could be even be a psychotic break, you never know how people handle things. Hmm. Like, I wouldn't want to just deliver a brand new year's a baby. Right. Well, also, yeah. Gallinger, you know, does go to work. He, yeah. he does. She's going to be home Alone. by herself. and. Yeah. and and dealing with it on her own, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a very, very iffy situation. Yeah. And, and also, even if that does happen, hope let's hope it doesn't. But who's to say that Gallinger's even on board with this and allowing another baby into that family? Well, the impression that I got was that he was open to the idea, mm -hmm. e even if just, just as a desperate yeah. measure to help his wife, wife cope right. with this thing. He does feel guilty too. Yeah, absolutely, I think he can't help it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, we we also you know Her Sister Harriet leaves the wake and uh, she runs into Cleary who's like you know suit up we got business essentially I'm <laughs> paraphrasing mm. um, and uh, you know she performs one of her operations and uh, I always love we we talk about it every week I yeah. love seeing these two together I love seeing uh, their uh, their relationship continue to evolve and for the first time we get to hear Sister Harriet talk about the toll that these operations take on her mm -hmm. um, you know as as a woman of the cloth as somebody who you know should be protecting these children but at the same time she's highly conflicted and she's terrified that she's going to go to hell and Cleary says that's what gives him his strength is yeah. the knowledge that he's going I love this conversation because she's questioning her own morality for being a person of the cloth and that also makes sense why she would suggest this orphan to the Gallinger family. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's great that we see her with a lot of levity. She's a, she's more, I see her more of a comedic character mm -hmm. in this show. Mm -hmm. So to see that she does have those questions, I mean, it, that's good and it builds her character. It does, but I thought it was interesting. I mean, this particular case was um, a pregnancy via rape. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, none of these situations are clear cut. None of these, you know, there's always a couple different ways it could have gone or it could go. And can you imagine if this woman had to have this child and even the mother, I think, that was there was saying, thank you so much. I don't mm -hmm. know what we would have done. Like, even though she feels so conflicted, she has to know on some level that she's doing the right thing, at least in this situation for her. Right. And then you have that juxtaposition with Cleary, who's sharing his experience with the nuns and we get to know a little bit about him that he really pretty much had the crap beaten out of him as a child mm -hmm. and that you know that's he, why he's as hard as he is that's why he's so hard mm -hmm. that's why he's turned away from the church and to see these two battle out heaven and hell and their own ideas of it I just think it's I think it's wonderful yeah, yeah it's really it's really nice because I mean thematically you have you have two characters who are completely opposite mm -hmm. and who have chosen completely different paths and and have had very different lives but 
feel not a need, but feel kind of a, a security and almost in this conversation, they're almost validating themselves mm -hmm. to each other and almost, you know, explaining and and philosophizing, 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 philosophizing. Yeah, it's uh, it's really it's really nice to see because <laughs> you know they're both very strong characters mm -hmm. and and you kind of see them. You know, you kind of get to understand why they are the way they are. It's interesting. They're kind of, uh, and maybe maybe this is the wrong metaphor, but they're kind of like the Rosencrantz and Guildenstern of of this whole piece. Mm -hmm. They're you know two strong characters operating on the periphery of this hospital uh, who you know turn up every episode and get to battle it out over life's big ideas. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you know a, a, a great show deserves an opportunity to breathe and express its philosophy. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I feel yeah. like that's what their storyline offers and it's always a joy to see. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we need to keep going. Uh, so we get a scene between uh, Dr. Edwards and Cornelia that I just want to touch on briefly because they have this uh, this very long history together, and especially considering the complications that uh, have developed in Cornelia's love life, I have to wonder if they will continue to grow closer because, like, they're very familiar. We don't see a ton of like man-woman touching, for mm -hmm. example. Not a lot of breaking of the physical barrier, and they're very playful with one another. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that there's anything romantic there, or do you think that there's? It's just we know each other so well. You're like my brother. I think they come from two different worlds, and I think if they were in the same world, there would be a chance. Mm -hmm. But they have, they're as close as they can be given their two worlds. I feel like it's not even something, you know, when you meet someone and you say, oh, well, I never thought about it. They're like yeah. my brother. I mm. feel like that's what they have between them, at least probably from Neely's side, mm -hmm. is that it's not a possibility ever. Sure. So would she have even think it or feel it? I'm not sure. Okay, that's fair. Well, uh, what I got out of this conversation was completely friendship, that they had mm -hmm. that mutual respect. They know each other. They friend are zone? Fr friend zone? Friend zone. Friend zone. Yeah. They are... <laughs> They have that respect for each other, and they know each other so well that anything can happen, and they always are going to be there for each other's back. And also, it shows just Edward's character, mm -hmm. who he was, ha who he ha always has been as a person. He's always been the person to challenge himself and be better than everyone else. Even in that little conversation about the challenge of standing on mm -hmm. one foot mm -hmm. in the rain, it shows that Edward's was the one who always went out to prove himself. And he's that kind of person. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and we get to see him finally face Dr. Thackeray yes. uh, towards the end of this episode. Mm -hmm. And like I remember the first time I watched this episode, I was so excited uh, that Thackeray changed his mind. He comes down, and it's just the worst version of this scene that we could have imagined. Mm -hmm. He's throwing everybody out. He's talking about how he's fired. There's no way you're going to be saved until he sees the science, mm -hmm. until he sees the advancement, the potential. Mm -hmm. And then I think he's just he's too excited by the possibilities progress. Yeah. yeah. And I love the way that Edwards works him in mm -hmm. this scene. Yes. Because he sees an opening yep. and mm -hmm. he just continues to to needle it. He's a fighter. You yeah. know, as yeah. we see in that scene in the bar, you know, he could get inside and get some quick jabs and just that line like, you know, you could let me go, but you would miss all the fun. Mm -hmm. Smile and he knows he's got him. And uh, I just, I can't wait to see these two working together. I feel like it's a culmination of everything that we've been working towards so far this season. And it I'm honestly, I'm, I'm over the moon about it. Over could, the moon. Yeah, I yeah. couldn't agree more. It was, it was a kind of a very exciting moment, and a, and lovely to see Dr. Edwards keep his cool, mm -hmm. but like you said, kind of like throwing those little jabs, getting in there, getting under Dr. Thackeray's skin to the point where he's welcomed on as, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. as the neck, and we'll see if he gets his deputy chief of surgery spot, but I'm guessing he will. Yeah, it, I mean, it's really the pivotal point mm -hmm. in the entire season, I yeah. think. I think it's really where the show kind of you know, has what you were saying before kind of at this point was something that chapter is over mm -hmm. and now it's a, a new beginning because these two are together now. I, yeah. I think I think just from an acting perspective, it's it's one of my favorite scenes in the entire show. I think Andre and Clive are so good in the scene. You you get to you get to hear Andre, you know, argue for you know, essentially his people and his place and and he hasn't done that to Clive mm -hmm. up until this point, Thackeray, I should say. Yeah. Um, and he gets to win. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a, like that's the thing. Like it, it's horrible that we lost, you know, Gallinger's baby, but there are so many wonderful wins in this episode. You can't help but be excited. Right. Um, and, and then to have the opportunity to have more wins in the future. Yeah. And with all these signs and yeah. technology. Yeah. Yet another win. Uh, I apologize, just we're mm -hmm. running low on time, is uh, Cornelia and Inspector Spate catch Typhoid Mary. <laughs> Literally catch her. Literally yeah. catch her. Cornelia <laughs> throws herself at her, tackles Tackle. him, tackles her to the ground. Oh. Uh, Which, and I was just thinking that seems unsanitary, the, all that body-to-body -body contact yeah, maybe. with this woman. There's a lot of layers going on. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of clothes. There's a lot of clothes going on. Yeah. But I love how Cornelia was the one to just throw herself at her to catch yeah, her. Yeah. After saying, you'll never catch me. But this just, I feel like, illustrates this is the kind of woman Cornelia is. Mm -hmm. She gets her hands dirty. She throws herself in there. And then we see later, you know, about her impending kind of winding oh down of her tenure and just the look on her face. Yeah. And you're just thinking, what? An, how is this woman going to survive, honestly? Because her spirit will be broken if she doesn't have, have the opportunity to do this or do yeah. something. To be important, to, to do something to worthwhile useful. with her life. She said yeah. that she was amazing at how uh, useful she felt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a really big deal. Absolutely. It's crucial to her self-esteem. It's crucial to, you know, just her, her well-being going forward. And then to have this horrifying final scene oh. where we understand the nature of what her father has essentially sold her into. Um, as uh, Mr. Showalter lets her know that he expects uh, rewards and pleasures for everyone. Terrifying. Terrifying. Skin Terrifying. crawling. I can't even, it's hard for me, I know what that could mean, but I'm trying to put it in the context of this, uh, you know, practically royal family, you know, their old right. money, mm -hmm. the right. way that they live, you know, I'm trying to understand how on earth is this is this really what he's talking I, about? I feel like he's one of those guys who considers his children his property. Possession. He, yeah. he made them. And, like, the way he talks about, you know, we had, I, I've always wanted a daughter. For I, what? Uh, for, yeah. for <laughs> why? For yeah. sick sex. Yeah. I'm t uh, it, like, Boo. seriously, right. seriously creeped me out. And I'm, I could not be more terrified for her. Um, and it's all in that moment where he says, open or close, and she says, closed like uh -huh. it why on earth would it be open like like please leave you've you have not only have you invaded my space you've shattered everything that i thought i knew about my life right uh -huh. now mm -hmm. it was uh it's interesting hearing the writers talk about it because mm -hmm. i think that scene was something different originally on hmm. not on the page i think when they first wrote it it was intended to be what everybody's thinking mm -hmm. that's going to happen that thankfully, thank God, doesn't happen. Oh, good. Um, but, you know, I think one of the strongest, I, it's one of the strongest endings because you're left with this, like I said before, this like really, truly unsettled feeling mm -hmm. where you're not exactly sure what just happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, Because he says everything, but he says it really creepily. Yes. Yeah. You know, he's not saying anything too over the line, but it's so inappropriate that he just walked into her room while she's undressing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's... Predator. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Absolutely. It's a bold move. It that's is. A... Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, we, unfortunately, we are out of time. Um, Michael, it was such a pleasure having you oh, on the show. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else coming down the way that people should look forward to or that they can catch you in? Um, at the, oh, I just did this movie, Stanford Prison Experiment. Okay. Which... Uh, Oh, wow, about year. the Stanford yeah. prison. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. I, I literally just finished that, though, so that won't be for a while. Okay. Um, and you're not on social media. We know how so... he feels about Twitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I respect it. Mm -hmm. I respect <laughs> those involved with it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you choose not to opt in. Very cool. Uh -huh. a really, really a pleasure having you, and we can't wait to see the rest of the season. It's really been fantastic. Uh, thanks for having me, man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Marissa Serafini, where can the people find you? Everyone can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Serafini TV. Okay, and Oriana Leo? I'm really sad around doing predictions because I have about 10. Oh, wow, <laughs> Hopefully yeah. Hopefully next time we'll get a chance. Yeah. You can find me on Twitter at Miss Oriana Leo or on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash The Oriana Leo. Please subscribe. I have a new season of Running Errands in Hollywood coming up soon. Okay, and you can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman. That's M-A-T-T-L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. You can also find all my videos for SourceFed and SourceFed Nerd on YouTube. You can find me here doing a whole bunch of stuff. I got finales coming up, uh, Under the Dome finale tomorrow, uh, uh, finale of 
Ray Donovan on Sunday. A couple weeks left of the strain. Got Agents of Shield, Sleepy Hollow starting up tomorrow, and uh, Sons of Anarchy. Thank you all so much. We will see you next week. Good night. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 